The <laughs> glossopharyngeal nerve. Oh yeah, back to another cranial nerve. This one's a cracker as well. Um, there's quite a lot going on with this one, and it's a really good example of a mixed nerve. Glossopharyngeal. Glosso, that refers to the tongue. Pharyngeal, hmm. so the pharynx is the space posterior to the nasal cavity and the oral cavity and the larynx, right? Okay, now uh, the reason why, why the glossopharyngeal nerve is such a great nerve is that um, it's a great example of how in the brainstem there are a whole load of neurons coming out, sending their axons out to different target structures. And those neurons might have quite different jobs and there are thousands of these neurons but they will occasionally travel together to get to similar places or to drop off as another neuron set of neurons is going on its way to another structure, right? So there are a lot, <laughs> there are a lot of neurons doing a lot of jobs here. And this is why if somebody says, oh, you must stimulate your such and such a nerve, um, well, they are massively simplifying the anatomy and the physiology involved. If you were to stimulate your glossopharyngeal nerve, like the whole nerve, what would you do? Well, you'd probably, probably collapse, you'd gag, um, you'd salivate, um, and you'd have lots of, you'd probably have bouts of pain as well in the back of your, <laughs> the back of your throat. So it wouldn't be a good thing to like stimulate in one go anyway. What we'll do is, we'll initially look at the cranial nerve nuclei in the brainstem that this nerve essentially forms from will follow the nerve out and see where it goes and as it goes we'll make note of the branches that come off it where they go to and what they do and link that back to those cranial nerve nuclei and by the end of all that we should have a pretty good understanding and in fact we'll be able to summarize what the glossopharyngeal nerve does all right and a couple of clinical bits and bobs at the end. Ooh, big one. All right, this is where we begin. Excuse my voice, by the way. I did my first um, cold run of the autumn yesterday, so I don't know if it's that that's killed some of the cells in my respiratory tract or whether I'm picking up a cold or something. I feel fine, so I don't know. Anyway, uh, the brain or the Brian, and down here, this is the brainstem, and we see the medulla and the pons. And the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine, forms from nuclei that are mostly in the medulla oblongata and a little bit in the lower, the inferior pons. And the first one we might think of is the nucleus of the tract solitarius, or the nucleus of the solitary tract, and we might just call it the solitary nucleus, to be brief. Um, so a nucleus is a collection of neuron cell bodies within the central nervous system. If we find a collection of neuron cell bodies outside the central nervous system, we call that a ganglia. And from those cell bodies, those neurons send their axons out to carry those action potentials to wherever. So they might be receiving sensory information or sending motor information. In the case of the solitary nucleus, this is the major visceral sensory nucleus in the brainstem. Uh, and in terms of the glossopharyngeal nerve, it's gonna be carrying back visceral sensations such as, ooh, gonna give it away, taste, well we did talk about the tongue, and baroreception and chemoreceptors are gonna send them information into the solitary nucleus. Then there is the spinal trigeminal nucleus. So the trigeminal nucleus, yes, we are also linking up to the trigeminal nerve here. If you remember your anatomy, the trigeminal nerve, cranial nerve five, is the major sensory nerve of the face. And the glossopharyngeal nerve will carry fibers from the spinal trigeminal nucleus, and those fibers will be carrying general somatic sensory information, touch, pressure, pain, temperature, that sort of thing. There is the nucleus ambiguous, which is spelt ambiguous, it's, it's spelt in a funny way. Nucleus ambiguous is going to be involved, okay, so the fibers from the nuclear amb nucleus ambiguous are gonna carry um, somatic motor fibers to some skeletal muscle. And the other nucleus is the inferior salivary nucleus, 
fibers from that nucleus are gonna to go to a salivary gland. The glossopharyngeal nerve innervates one skeletal muscle and it innervates one salivary gland on either side. Those are the four nuclei. All right, so on the medulla oblongata, we can see a little swelling on either side. This is the olive. And we can see a whole bunch of bundles of neurons, little rootlets coming out of the brainstem around the olive. And we find the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine, its rootlets are posterior to the olive and superior to those rootlets of the vagus nerve. Nine, ten, vagus nerve is 10, nine, 10 and the accessory nerve is cranial nerve 11. So that's where the glossopharyngeal nerve starts. Posterior is the olive, um, superior here. So this is like the post delivery sulcus or something, sulcus being a bit of a groove. And if we look at the skull, we'll see that the glossopharyngeal nerve will descend and leave the cranial cavity with the vagus nerve, with the accessory nerve, through the jugular foramen. Um, with the internal jugular vein. Now I remember what I went to my office for, it was to get a pipe cleaner. I'll be right back. Here we go. So there's foramen magnum there. Next to foramen magnum is a big ugly hole. And the reason it's a big ugly hole is because we have a lot of different things going through it, so they make a weird shape. But that's the jugular foramen, that's how the glossopharyngeal nerve leaves the skull, but before it does, it gives off a branch called the tympanic branch. I think it's also the nerve of Jacobson, but tympanic branch is more helpful. See where we are there, right? See where the, the nerve is. And here, this is where the ear is. So the tympanic branch runs to the middle ear space. That is, you know, this is the external auditory meatus. If you stick your finger in there, don't do it. You shouldn't stick things in your ear. But if you were to stick your finger in there, you would eventually come up against the tympanic membrane if your finger was small enough. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that the tympanic cavity is on the medial side of the tympanic membrane where the little bones of the ear are, the ossicles of the ear. And that's where the tympanic nerve, the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve goes to. So those neurons that innervate the mucosa in that tympanic cavity, those neurons are going to carry general sensation from that ear space back to the spinal trigeminal nucleus. So this is a sensation of, you know, uh, uh, a pain, temperature, touch, that sort of thing, right? But there's more. Some of those fibers in the tympanic branch are preganglionic parasympathetic fibers from the inferior salivary nucleus in the brainstem. So these fibers, these neurons, they're axons, they've got a different job. Um, and they will run through to the same space, but then they'll, they'll form another branch, the lesser petrosal nerve, which works its way out through various means to get to the space under here. And they, those fibers will synapse with the otic ganglion. Have I got an otic ganglion? Maybe. Um, here's a deep dissection of the face. Um, here is where we find the otic ganglion. There's the trigeminal ganglion there. The trigeminal nerve is sending the mandibular branch down out of the cranial cavity through foramen ovale and just where that mandibular branch of the trigeminal nerve appears, that's where we find the otic ganglion. Uh, it might have been on here, or you might be able to imagine it was there. So the otic ganglion is one of the parasympathetic ganglia of the head. The thing about parasympathetic innervation of something is there are two neurons. There's your preganglionic parasympathetic neuron. That's the one we've been following so far. And then it synapses with a second neuron, which is your postganglionic parasympathetic neuron because it's going to run from the ganglion to the target structure. And that postganglionic parasympathetic neuron, I say one, there'll be thousands of them, will run with the auriculotemporal nerve to the parotid gland.
So that inferior salivary nucleus is sending paras parasympathetic secretomotor innervation to the parotid salivary gland to tell it to create saliva, to secrete saliva, to uh, not to create it, but to you know squeeze it out now because we need to salivate. That is quite different to the general sensation from uh, the, that tympanic cavity, right? Two different jobs, two different cranial nerve nuclei, two different sets of neurons traveling to, well, you know, parotid literally means next to the ear, to similar regions. You get the idea. This is the glossopharyngeal nerve, and we haven't even left the skull yet. We haven't even left the cranial cavity. Here's, here's some more fun. Um, I said that parasympathetic innovation, you've got this two neuron chain, right? Well, sensory nerves, um, what we see in the body is we see that the um, somatic sensory nerves, the cells that have formed those neurons have migrated a little way away from the central nervous system. So in the spinal cord, we see the dorsal root ganglion a little way outside the spinal cord and it set those, the cells of the dorsal root ganglion, those neurons, send an axon back to the spinal cord through the dorsal root, that's all sensory, and then sends an axon off around to the target structure. Right? Um, where else do we see? Oh, we saw the, um, we just saw, didn't we, the um, trigeminal ganglion here. This is cranial nerve five, the general sensory nerve of the face, somatic sensory, again, from the skin around here, pain, touch, temperature. So the same things happened here for the trigeminal nerve. The cell bodies have formed, the neuron cell bodies have formed outside the central nervous system. And then they've sent axons back to the brain stem and they sent axons out to the target structures. So we have like each neuron there has an axon going out in both directions. We get the same thing with the glossopharyngeal nerve. Um, so uh, we've actually got it on here. We've got the, the jugular foramen there and the nerves going out through it. But just as the glossopharyngeal nerve goes out through the jugular foramen, we see two little, little bumps on the glossopharyngeal nerve. And those are the sensory, the somatic sensory ganglia part of the glossopharyngeal nerve, um, the superior and inferior ganglia. How are you doing? Are you still with me? Because we've still got a way to go. So um, as the glossopharyngeal nerve leaves the cranial cavity through the jugular foramen, we see a couple of little bumps. Those bumps are the ganglia of the sensory neurons the cell bodies are there and they are going to send an axon back to the spinal trigeminal ganglion and an axon out to the target structure. We'll see where they go to later. But that means that we are dropping out down here. So this is the internal jugular vein and then next to it will be the internal carotid artery. And um, cranial nerve 10, the vagus nerve, will be running with these guys. It will run all the way down into the chest. But the glossopharyngeal nerve will run, run down here. And we would be uh, up in there, right? That's where the glossopharyngeal nerve would be appearing from. And look, we've got some muscles and a sticky, spiky bit of bone here. That sticky, spiky bit of bone is the styloid process here. So we're, we've got as far as the styloid process. We've gone from there to there. Do you see how the jugular foramen is right next to the styloid process? And the glossopharyngeal nerve is going to innervate the stylopharyngeus muscle. So that's actually a muscle that we can't really see here. That's a muscle that's going to run from the styloid process to the pharynx. So it's gonna help elevate the pharynx during swallowing, probably speaking, that sort of thing. So we can see there's a whole bunch of skeletal muscles here. Swallowing, speaking, this is a skeletal muscle. So these neurons of the glossopharyngeal nerve will be somatic motor neurons innervating a skeletal muscle, which means that they are gonna to connect to the nucleus ambiguous. So these are different fibers again, doing a different job.
but that's one of the jobs of glossopharyn the glossopharyngeal nerve. Okay, uh, ooh, <laughs> yeah, now we've got another really, so right nearby, so styloid process is up here, and then not far away down here, we have the carotid bifurcation, really, really important bit of anatomy. So the common carotid artery is dividing into the external and internal carotid arteries. Here, we find the carotid sinus, which is a swelling of, uh, is it the internal carotid artery? Probably. A slight dilation there. And then the carotid body, which is at the bifurcation. The carotid sinus has stretch receptors in its walls. So as blood pressure increases and that blood vessel is stretched, those baroreceptors send that information back to the brainstem. And then the, the chemoreceptors in the carotid body um, monitor, essentially dissolve CO2, O2. So they're looking at the blood gases and sending that information back to the brainstem. Do you remember which nucleus was involved in that? That was the solitary nucleus, right? That was the major visceral sensory nucleus. So the, the solitary nucleus or the nucleus of the tract, solitarius, um, neurons from that, are passing to the carotid sinus and the carotid body. This is the, the nerve of herring, this gets called here. The nerve to the carotid sinus, whatever. Um, so the glossopharyngeal nerve also carries, is, carries baroreceptor and chemoreceptor information from the carotid bifurcation back to the, the solitary tract, the solitary nucleus. All right. So we're still not traveling very far. We've got a little bit more work to do, but we're staying in the vicinity. So there's the carotid bifurcation there. We're nearby now. Uh, that's the nasal cavity. That's the oral cavity. So this space back here, that's the nasopharynx. That's the oropharynx. That's where we're going. These muscles back here are the pharyngeal constrictors. They wrap around here, forming the walls of the pharynx. And the glossopharyngeal nerve is gonna find its way in the gap between the superior and middle pharyngeal constrictor muscles to get into the pharynx. Now, in the pharynx, there's a pharyngeal plexus. So there are lots of nerves supplying the mucosa uh, and carrying general sensory information back from the pharynx. Um, so the glossopharyngeal nerve and the vagus nerve both have roles back here, right? Um, the glossopharyngeal nerve is going to carry um, somatic sensation, general sensation from the pharynx, from the regions around the tonsils, um, back to, remember this is somatic sensation, so these fibres are carrying information back to the spinal trigeminal nucleus, right? Um, we will come back to that later as well. Um, so that's, you know, pressure, pain, touch. And then it gives off a couple of lingual branches. So lingual are gonna to go to the tongue and, it, and the, it's the pharyngeal branch that is responsible for getting involved in the pharyngeal plexus. So the lingual branches, all oh right, so the glossopharyngeal nerve has two jobs to do in the posterior third of the tongue. And those, those lingual branches, one of them will carry special sensation of taste from the posterior third of the tongue back to the nucleus of special viscery, visceral sensation, right? Which was the, the solitary nucleus, all right? So taste, there are a whole bunch of fibers there linking the solitary nucleus with the taste receptors in the posterior third of the tongue. And then in the posterior third of the tongue, we also have general sensation, somatic sensation, you know, pressure, pain, temperature, touch, that sort of thing. So the other lingual branch is gonna be carrying uh, general somatic sensation from the posterior third of the tongue back to the spinal trigeminal nucleus because it's general sensation, right? And then there, there's a tonsillar branch as well, which is also carrying fibers to the tonsillar region. So the, well, we get to the, we finally get to the glossopharyngeal bit, right? Um, <clears throat> and um, the, uh, yeah, so the glossopharyngeal nerve is carrying special sensation 
from the posterior third of the tongue back to the solitary nucleus and general sensation from the posterior third of the tongue and the pharynx and the tonsils around here back to the spinal trigeminal uh, nucleus. Um, all right, so we, we, can, we can sum up what the glossopharyngeal nerve does now, can we? So the glossopharyngeal nerve carries um, somatic sensation from the tympanic cavity. Um, it innervates the uh, stylopharyngeus muscle. It carries general sensation from the posterior third of the tongue and the oropharynx, and it carries the special sensation of taste from the posterior third of the tongue. And it also carries um, baroreceptor and chemoreceptor information from the carotid sinus um, and the, the carotid body at the bifurcation of the carotid artery, right? Easy when you summarize, but do you see what I said at the start? The glossopharyngeal nerve is a fantastic example of how it is a mixed nerve, a truly mixed nerve, carrying a number of different neurons, a number of different fibers from different nuclei in the brainstem that do quite different jobs in different parts of this region. The, those neurons are also all going to similar places or they're jumping off as the nerve goes nearby. So this is a mixed nerve. These, nerves are, these neurons are bundled together to form a nerve and then they jump off to form a branch to get to the structure they're innovating. Do you see what I mean? If you were to innovate the whole glossopharyngeal nerve at once, all those things would be switched on. It would be bad. Anywho, Clinical stuff then. All right, the first one is, you know, how do you test? So the, cr the cranial nerve exam, how do you test cranial nerve nine, the glossopharyngeal nerve? Um, I don't think you do really, but you would test it by poking the back of the oral cavity in the oropharynx, because that's where the general sensation travels from. And if you did that, most people, at least 80% of people would, Whoa, they'd probably be sick on you, but they would certainly gag so it's the, the glossopharyngeal nerve is the sensory limb, the sensory part of the gag reflex in that if an unexpected or large object touches the mucosa at the back of the oral cavity at the oral pharynx, the sensory information goes back to the brainstem and triggers a reflex. So the vagus nerve causes all of these muscles to contract and stop that foreign object from blocking the airway. That's the gag reflex. It can be learned and unlearned. It is normally absent in, in, in many people. Apparently, if you poke it long enough, you can trigger it in everybody, but I don't know who did that study or who wants to follow up that study. The other clinical thing would be um, neuralgia. You might have heard of trigeminal neuralgia, which is uh, facial pain, and you can get a similar neuralgia of the glossopharyngeal nerve, but the pain then is gonna be localized back here. There'll be bouts of pain in the posterior tongue, oropharynx, the walls of the pharynx, that sort of thing, right? Could last for seconds, could last for minutes. The really um, difficult part about this is that that can be triggered by swallowing or speaking. What causes it? Most of the time, don't know. Um, one extreme solution is severing uh, the spinal trigeminal tract, which demonstrates the anatomy that we've been talking about, and that solves the neuralgia, shows that, shows that these general somatic sensory neurons are traveling with the glossopharyngeal nerve to the trigeminal nucleus. Does this help understand the wiring in that we've got like a, a trigeminal nucleus in here that does the sensory stuff and those fibers then just take different routes to get to the different places or does it make it worse? Anyway, um, yeah, so uh, that's the anatomy of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Yes, there is a lot. Yes, it is detailed but it is a good example of a couple of important principles and you can summarize its functions. And you often have to do that with cranial nerves. Break it down to the glossopharyngeal nerve, special sensation of taste and general sensation from the posterior third of the tongue, sensation from the back of the pharynx, gag reflex, sensation from the tympanic cavity, that's somatic sensation, not hearing. Um, oh, that was the one I missed, wasn't it? Motor to the parotid salivary gland. So it stimulates saliva from the salivary gland. 
and sensory from the baroreceptors and chemoreceptors of the carotid bifurcation. Anywho, good luck. Well done. See you next week.